Good morning, and welcome to our virtual worship service of the Fredonia Presbyterian Church. We welcome all of you who are joining us electronically and spiritually, and we pray that we can praise God in our presence today, and we, we pray that all that we do will please God as well. Welcome in Jesus' name. I invite you to join me in the opening sentences that you'll find in your bulletin. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Friends, please join me in the responsive call to worship. Give praise to God. Praise the Lord, for it is God who saves. It is God who forgives. It is God who delivers. Give thanks and praise to the Lord. Let us welcome God to this moment and place and join in worship. Let's bow for a moment of silent confession. And prayer, friends, let's join our voices in the prayer of confession. Christ Jesus, our teacher and friend, we have not listened for your word amid the clamor of words all around us. We are more pleased to repeat familiar tunes than to listen for new melodies and strange harmonies. We try harder to defend what we think we know than to reach for that which is beyond our grasp. Slow to trust, afraid of the unknown. We are cautious to hear and do your will. We pray for ears to hear the cries of our neighbors and for hearts which resonate with your spirit. Silence us and instruct us until we learn afresh to sing the songs of faith, hope, and love. Amen. Friends, Believe the good news of the gospel, for in Jesus Christ we find forgiveness of our sins. It's with great joy that I can declare to you now that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture lessons for today begin with Psalm 114. In the Old Testament, in which we hear these words. When Israel came out of Egypt, when the house of Jacob came out from a people who spoke a different language, Judah was God's sanctuary, Israel was God's territory. The sea saw it happen and ran away, the Jordan River retreated, the mountains leaped away like rams. The hills leaped away like lambs. See, why did you run away? Jordan, why did you retreat? Mountains, why did you leap away like rams? Hills, why did you leap away like lambs? Earth, tremble before the Lord. Tremble before the God of Jacob, the one who turned that rock into a pool of water that flint stone into a spring of water. And our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 32. Excuse me. Luke 18 verses 1 through 8. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. 
In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him, asking, Give me justice in this case against my adversary. For a while he refused, but finally said to himself, I don't fear God or respect people, but I will give this widow justice because she keeps bothering me. Otherwise, there will be no end to her coming here and embarrassing me. The Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Won't God provide justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will give them justice quickly. But when the human one comes, will he find faithfulness on earth? Friends, the good news of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our parable for today, Jesus tells the story of the persistent widow to show his first disciples and us about our need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. Now, I prefer the New International Version of the Bible's translation of this verse in which Jesus says we should always pray and never give up. In prayer, we consciously open ourselves to the presence of and working of God's Holy Spirit. Prayer helps sustain our faith until Jesus returns. We need not lose heart. The setting of Jesus' parable is not specified. We can easily identify our own situation with this parable. The judge neither fears God nor respects human beings. Now, in the ancient world, as it is today, a judge was charged with seeing that justice was enacted in a community. In the Jewish tradition, justice is a relational notion. The just community is one in which relationships manifest the qualities that God desires. And the the justice that God desires particularly includes protection for the vulnerable and marginalized. This judge, however, does not honor God and consequently God's vision of justice. Women in Jesus' day typically had much less power and security than men. And in certain circumstances, they were even subject to men. Widows were particularly vulnerable. Widows had few inheritance rights. Some women were left altogether alone and therefore were completely dependent upon the compassion of the community for their survival. Now since no man is mentioned in connection with the widow in today's parable, she most likely is completely alone in the world. While the Old Testament is permeated with divine concern for widows. And we, as well as Jesus' early listeners, would do well to remember that God also speaks in the Old Testament about how failure to care for widows is the cause of the divine judgment. Later in the New Testament book of Acts, we see the early Christian church repeatedly ministering to widows in accordance with Old Testament teaching. The injustice suffered by the widow in today's parable is unspecified. We know only that it involves an adversary. Someone in the community, perhaps even someone in her family, 
may have denied her provision. As listeners of this story, we are quickly drawn in and become immensely sympathetic to the widow and confident of God's desire for justice on her behalf. The woman comes before the judge repeatedly and is repeatedly turned away. Her persistence is remarkable, especially if, as we believe, she acts by herself and without benefit of male relatives or other community support. The poor widow's persistence makes us want to step in and protest the injustice being done to her. Now, the judge eventually provides justice for the widow, but not because he thinks it's the right thing to do, but rather because he wants to get rid of her nuisance. In what may be a bit of Jesus' humor showing through, the Greek phrase that is translated in verse 5 as, she keeps bothering me and embarrassing me, could be more literally translated as, she gives me a black eye. Well, Jesus then moves on from the lesser to the greater. If a reprobate judge responds to the widow's pleas for justice in order to get rid of her, how much more will God act on behalf of those faithful who cry to heaven day and night? God was with the widow in her protracted efforts to get justice. And God suffers with us as we await the, exam the culmination of God's divine purposes. Jesus' parable encouraged the church in his day, and it encourages us today to continue our life in prayer. In prayer, we consciously open ourselves to the presence and working of God's Holy Spirit. Prayer helps sustain our faith until Jesus returns. We need not lose heart. Jesus said, always pray and never give up. Well, let's hear Jesus' parable retold in a more contemporary setting in the hopes that we will be able to better grasp and more fully understand what Jesus was saying to us in his parable. The doors to the emergency room rolled open. There was no siren, no paramedics scurrying out of an ambulance, only a medium-sized, scruffy-looking woman in a dark winter coat. She brushed the snow off her arms and tucked the insulation back into the ripped pocket of her coat. She walked right up to the receptionist's counter and leaned on it. The receptionist barely looked away from her computer screen and said, Back again? What is it now? The woman pulled up her sleeve to reveal her forearm. I have this here rash, see, she said. Picking up the phone, the receptionist said, You know the routine. Go sit in the waiting room, and a nurse will have a look. And then she said into the phone, Dottie's here. Behind the closed doors of the emergency room, the doctors and nurses rushed about. The heart attack had just arrived. The overdose was out of danger. But the car accident broken arm awaited attention. The rash would wait. The new ER nurse said, Is that Dottie, the hypochondriac? This is what, her fourth visit this week? Why doesn't she go to an urgent care clinic for a change? Another nurse said, they only take people with cash or insurance. We take the rest. It's crazy, isn't it? Look at this 60-page medical history, said another nurse. It's Dottie's. She clipped the stack of papers to the clipboard. And here's the list of all her current meds. Having this saves a lot of time. We don't have to get the same old information from her several times a week. The nurse turned and headed toward the waiting room where Dottie sat. 
the new ER nurse responded, Great. She demands attention, but doesn't even pay. Some nerve. Can't pay, said the second nurse. Poor Dottie. She has no insurance and can't afford her medications. But she still smokes. Smokes, said the, ER, the new ER nurse. You know, if she didn't smoke, she would have more money for medications. The second nurse looked at her and said, I don't know. She didn't qualify for breast cancer screening, so the cancer was pretty advanced when it was finally discovered. A double mastectomy, now chemotherapy, pretty expensive. A med tech asked, have you seen those cute little flower boxes she makes? She sells them for $20 each, so surely she can pay for some medications. The emergency room continued to move at a frenetic pace, even when Dottie walked into a patient bay. She sat on the bed waiting to be seen by the doctor. After a few minutes, she got up and walked into the next patient bay. The man with a broken arm lay in bed crying. She reached out a dirt smudged hand and touched him on the arm that wasn't broken. What's the matter, hon? Dottie said to him. Where do you hurt? I'm broke, said the man. I only have two dollars. And he started sobbing. Oh, there, there, said Dottie, patting him up his arm. Two dollars? Why, you can go a week on two dollars. On Tuesday, you go to the Presbyterian Church, and they'll give you a slip you can take to the restaurant for a meal. And then on Saturday, you go to the food pantry for canned food and bread. You'll be just fine, hon, just fine. Stick with Dottie. The new ER nurse came into the room and asked, Dottie, what are you doing in here? You're supposed to be in the next bay and sick. It's okay, said the man. She's been talking to me. Dottie's been talking to me. Really, said the new ER nurse. Dottie pulled the planter out of the paper bag and said to the new nurse, I have one of these here planters for you, hon. Only $20. All your nurse friends have one. Oh, no. Not this time. Maybe next time, said the new nurse. Now you need to get a, get to move on and go next door. Next time. Yes, next time, said Dottie with a, a laugh that erupted from the depths of her soul. The deep, crackly laughter of a poor, uneducated survivor, social worker, and hope giver. We need not lose heart, Jesus said. Jesus also said, always pray and never give up. Amen. And now friends, you're invited to sing along with the hymn the words of the hymn will be appearing on the bottom of your screen and you're encouraged to follow along with those words as you sing.
Friends, I enjoy, uh, uh, encourage you now to join me in the affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, friends, we come to our time of our prayers. You'll see in your bulletin a list of persons whom we wish to lift up today. In a moment, I will say their name in prayer and invite you to give a, a brief prayer of silence uh, for that person, for that concern. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord God, we come to you in the midst of the chaos in our world and in our uh, nation and in our community. It's a, a time of, of hope, hopefulness as well as a time of anxiety. Schools are opening. And some, some schools are, are having full-time in-class. Some are having part-time in-class and part-time uh, at home. Some are, are having uh, full-time distance learning. And uh, it's confusing and it can cause all kinds of anxiety as well. Will our children be safe? Will our teachers and administrators be safe? How will social distancing take place? What kind of activities can they participate in or should they? Help us, Lord, guide us. We need help determining what is the best course of action for our children, for our schools, for our community businesses, for the direction of our country as well. Lord, we try to fix things ourselves, but we need your help, and that's the truth. We simply cannot do it all, and when we think, we're going to, when we think of all the things to be done, it is so easy for us to become overwhelmed. Give us your sense of peace, Lord. Center us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to focus on that which is necessary and helpful. And help us to prioritize instead of feeling like things are out of control. We pray these things for ourselves, for our church, our congregation, our community, our nation. And Lord, we would sure be grateful if you would help speed a vaccine for the COVID-19 virus. We want, we want it to be safe. We want it to be effective. But Lord, you know, we also want it to be pretty soon. Help us, Lord, and help those who are working to help our nation as well. Lord, we lift to you those persons on our list whose concerns are in our hearts as well. And I will name them now. Lori Fabritis, Janet Gerkensmeyer, Gina Waite-Platt, as well as Josiah Robinette, Michelle Patterson, 
and Zachary Deloniak. We also pray for Amy Calm, Caleb Kaus, Judy Sumption, Lorraine Withington, and Dick Abram. We pray also, Lord, for Richard Staborski, Greg Foreman, for Donna Heinzman, and Tim Brackett, for Hazel Crockless. We pray for Travis Klaus. Lord, we lift to you Milo Willie, Joy Height, Charles Devine, Barb and Dick Skinner, as well as Caitlin Bartlett. Lord, also hear our prayers for Rena Finko, for Greg Moeller. We pray for Dick Ackley, as well as Rachel H. Lord, we pray for Kim Ricecoe, May Lai, Dick Watt, Reverend Early Waller, and Tom Withington. And Lord, we are mindful of the needs of the Topaza Center for Orphans of the Church of Jesus Christ in Madagascar, as well as the Presbyterian Education Board in Pakistan. And we ask, Lord, that you would minister to the needs of the people in those places as well. Lord God, we are trusting you for blessings to abound in our lives and in the lives of those we have lifted this day, and also for those whom we may not have mentioned but who are still upon our hearts. And so, Lord, we just lift these prayers to you now. And we do it with confidence, knowing that you love us and that we can ask these things through Christ our Lord, the one who taught us all to pray when he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, we need to pause for a moment and just remember how gracious God has been with each of us in matters small and great. And know that God loves us so much and still cares for us. And the work of God continues through our church and others. And so let's pause for a moment of thankfulness and as we pause, I, I will say a brief prayer, but I would also encourage you to remember to continue sharing your gifts and tithes and offerings with the Lord through our church. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful for the many, many things that you have done for us and with us, and we pray for your sustaining grace to continue to uh, lift us up not only as individuals, but as a body of Christ and as a community of faith and as, as members of, a, of the greater community as well, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we can uh, show our thankfulness for what you've done for us by sharing with others in whatever ways we can, not, not simply to make ourselves feel better, well, so, but so that others might see you in our lives and be blessed and strengthened in Jesus' name. For it's in this strong name we pray. Amen.
And let's join our voices in a unison prayer of thanksgiving as well. O God, who is our strength, you have protected us from those who would seek to oppress us. You have shielded us from those who would seek to destroy the good gifts you have put in us. Your love and power never fail. Thanks and praises to you, our safety and stronghold. We exalt you, O God, majestic in holiness, for there is none like you. Amen. <laughs> And friends, before the charge and blessing, I would just like to take a moment of personal privilege and share with you that this will be our last time together. Uh, in a, about another week, my wife Judy and I will be moving to Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so we will be parted from one another geographically, but not spiritually. And I just wanted to express to you what a privilege and honor it has been for me to serve you these past months. And I pray that God will continue to abide in your hearts and in your faith community of Fredonia Presbyterian Church. And may God continue to, to bless you as well. Thank you, friends. And now receive this charge. Go into the world. After you wash your hands, of course, and put on your mask. Maintain social distancing as well. But nevertheless, go into the world and share Christ with others in whatever way God leads you to share Christ, whether that's through an act of kindness, a smile, a gesture, or a hand up to a person in need. Go and share Christ with others. And go now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.